Today we're talking about trapdoor spiders. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard. I appreciate you joining me today. I've got three different species of trapdoor spiders that I need to unpack and rehouse. And since a lot of people have been asking me to do a video on trapdoor spiders, I figured this was the perfect opportunity. Well, everything's set up and ready to go, so let's start rehousing some spiders. So I've got three different species of three different sizes that come from three different environments. So this video should kind of touch on all different aspects of the husbandry of different species of trapdoor spiders. Now the one we're going to start off with is the smallest one I currently have. At least I think it's the smallest one. It's kind of hard to tell because they're trapdoor spiders. They spend all their time hidden down in their burrow. This is the Lephistius ornatus. It's endemic to the jungles of Thailand. So obviously it's a little more moisture dependent and I'm going to be keeping it on some damp substrate. Now being a trapdoor or spider, they definitely require a lot more depth than pretty much anything else. They don't do a whole lot of wandering outside of their burrow. In fact, I think maybe on one occasion I've ever seen it outside of its burrow. Majority of its time is spent deep down inside, just waiting for something to cross its path so we can pop out and grab it. I got this one as a tiny sling probably about nine months ago, and it doesn't look like it's put on much size. But through my research, which there isn't much out there, I found that this is a pretty slow growing species, and their overall size isn't that much larger than an inch, maybe one to two inches. So it's not a big spider to begin with, but it's it's been in this little dram vial for a while, so it's time to move into a new enclosure. Hopefully this goes well. So what I've got here is just one of my basic juvenile enclosures. I've got it set up with uh, some jungle mix soil that's uh, kind of damp, but not like soaked, just kind of damp with a bunch of sphagnum moss and some dried up leaves and a little bit of, you know, just kind of sand and rocks and stuff like that. I've went ahead and made a little starter burrow, just kind of like poke my hole right down there in the center, somewhere for it to go and, and start making its home. And we're just gonna try to get it out of this enclosure into its new one. Well, it's definitely larger than it was when I initially got it. That spiderling was probably about an eighth of an inch in size, and you know, it's looking more about half an inch. It's also, as you can see, very plump. So it's probably nearing a mold. but we've got it set up in here. I'll put some pictures of what it will look like when it's full grown, but let's move on to the next spider. Now these came from my new friend Peter over at Bugs in Cyberspace. Now just for full disclosure, this isn't like a paid advertisement for him. He didn't send me any money. Uh, he did send me the spiders for free, but really it was kind of like a trade. I sent him some tarantula collective merchandise. He sent me some spiders. So this isn't a sponsored video. We're just kind of doing a little bit of a collaboration here. I'm gonna unbox and show you these spiders. He also sends some footage of where each of these spiders are endemic. So I can share some of that with you. And he's also putting out a companion video today over on his YouTube channel, which I will link at the end of this video, that will have some more of the scientific aspects. You know, where these spiders came from, how they're collected, what their environment looks like in nature. So be sure to check that video out. I will have it linked at the end of this video, as well as the first link down below in the description. Be sure to show some love to Bugs in Cyberspace. You can follow him on Instagram, subscribe to his YouTube channel, and he also has a website where he sells a lot of these different species of bugs, including some of these trapdoor spiders. Links to all of that will be down down below in the description. Now this species of trapdoor spider comes from the forests of Oregon. It's actually a folding door trapdoor spider. So it's a little bit different. Whereas the last spider we rehoused just needed a flat surface and deep substrate, this one tends to make its home on an angle, usually around like the bottom of trees or kind of on the side of a slope. So we'll need to set up its enclosure a little bit differently. This species is called the Antrodiatus pacificus. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, so be sure you check his video to get the correct pronunciation. Now these species of spiders require a little bit different enclosure than what I have been using. And I spent all day driving around to all the different hobby shops and you know pretty much anywhere that's 
sells anything that could be used as an enclosure, trying to find the perfect fit. I really wanted an enclosure that was gonna provide six to eight inches of depth, but it really didn't need to be that wide because the spider never really leaves its burrow. I was looking for something that was tall and kind of slender. And what I came across were these cool little Rubbermaid containers. The nice thing is they are kind of slender, you know, but they are wide and of course they are deep. And they have this nice airtight kind of seal lid here. Um, I mean, it's not gonna be airtight when I'm done with it, but it really locks into place well. They're called uh, Rubbermaid Brilliance Pantry Organization. This one is used for flour, apparently, but it's nice and clear. I think it's gonna make a great enclosure. I'll leave a link to where you can find it on Amazon down below in the description. Uh, I don't highly suggest it based mainly on the price. This thing was like 16 or $18 a piece. So uh, that's a lot more than what I'm used to paying for a kind of just cheap acrylic enclosure. But I will say that the lid locks on very nicely. It's very secure and it was really easy drilling ventilation holes in here, much easier than the AMAC boxes. So this is what it's gonna look like set up. As you can see, I've got plenty of depth here and I've got everything kind of at a slant. Now, Peter was telling me that they like to make their homes, like they're kind of folding doors uh, around the roots of trees and stuff like that. So I put in a few pieces of cork bark and a bunch of dried leaves, sphagnum moss, a little bit of sand, a tiny bit of gravel, really trying to replicate that environment. And I put those little slivers of cork bark at an angle to maybe kind of simulate uh, a few different roots and went ahead and pre-made kind of a hole where it can go ahead and start making its burrow. So I kind of got these ventilation holes on the top, front and back, and then I put cross ventilation holes along the side, kind of towards the top. And another cool thing is he's actually sent these specimens in these awesome little uh, enclosures. Of course, these enclosures won't work for these specific specimens, but I mean, I'm definitely gonna save these and uh, use them to house some other spiders in the future. Now, as you can see, this is a pretty small spider. It's just larger than the ventilation holes I used. So this is probably a much larger enclosure than it actually needs. But I think with time, the spider's gonna grow and this will kind of avoid me having to rehouse it in the future. It'll just be able to stay in this enclosure uh, indefinitely. One very impressive aspect with uh, these trapdoor spiders is their speed. I mean, it is like on par with old world tarantulas, maybe even faster. I, I didn't even see it move. It was just, it was there and then it was over there. So if you're gonna get trapdoor spiders, be prepared for some speed. Now, Peter over at Bugs in Cyberspace was uh, also generous enough to send me some very cool stickers. So this nice little Vingaroon sticker. Uh, looks like we've got a tailless whip scorpion. And uh, what's this other one? Oh, nice a scorpion. Uh, I think I'm gonna have to put those on my cars. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Peter. But a lot of people have been asking me like where they can get different scorpions or vingaroons, mantises, stuff like that. Uh, so I will, I would highly suggest checking out uh, his website. Now this next species is a Utenza relata or the Southwestern trapdoor spider. This is actually the largest trapdoor spider here in the US and they're endemic to the Southwest like uh, in Texas. Now that environment is different than the last two environments as it's much more arid, it's warmer, the ground itself is a lot harder, kind of look more like a mixture of clay and dirt rather than like just dirt. So I tried to set this enclosure up a little bit different. Now all the video and photos that uh, I've seen online and that Peter was able to send me, it looks like they make their trapdoors kind of on a flat surface. So for this enclosure, what I did is uh, I set it up to be flat. I've got just jungle mix that's kind of damp on the bottom in case it wants to burrow deep and get a little extra humidity. And in the middle layer, I have just straight dry peat moss mixed in with a little bit of cocoa fiber. And I compacted all of that down really tight because they do need such a deep burrow. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't gonna collapse in on them. And then for the top layer, what I did is mix some excavator clay with peat moss and damped it down a little bit, mixed it up really good, probably about a 50-50 mix. So it kind of turned into this harder clay. 
that more closely resembles the type of dirt that at least would be on the surface down there in Texas. I mixed in a little bit of sand, uh, also put some like dry dead leaves, sphagnum moss, stuff like that, just to kind of give it more of a naturalistic look. And on Peter's suggestion, I went ahead and started the burrow on the side of the enclosure. So hopefully that it will use that for its trapdoor burrow and maybe we'll be able to see it burrow all the way down. There's no guarantee it'll do that. It may just overlook that and make its own burrow right in the middle, but we could at least try. Now this specimen is a little bit larger and it just looks amazing. So I'm very excited to get it set up. Sinking its fangs, repositioning. I don't know what to. I don't know what to do here. There we go. Well, that was awesome. That guy was bigger than I thought and probably a little more grumpy than I anticipated. But I think it's awesome. It's gonna make an awesome addition to this collection. If you wanna stay up to date on all the developments on these species and you know, also see if there's any other updates to how I'm kind of keeping them, you know, kind of maybe changing up the husbandry a little bit, because this is kind of experimental. There's not a whole lot of information out there on how to keep trapdoor spiders. Be sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. That way you get alerted anytime I upload new videos. Now, if you're interested in seeing exactly where these come from in nature, see how they set up their trap doors in their natural environment, as well as just some more scientific information on them, be sure to check out this video right here for Bugs in Cyberspace. And if you wanna catch up on all the past episodes of Tarantula Tuesday, check out this video right here. I really appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you wanna see more videos. Thanks for buying Tarantula Collective merchandise, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>